What's up everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Custom Track Wiki Showcase, a series where I talk about some custom content made for Mario Kart Wii throughout the month that I find interesting. Today's episode is on everything uploaded to the wiki during July 2022. You might have noticed that this month's episode is longer, I'm not sure how long it is at the point of writing the script, but we do have 14 tracks to cover in depth with 14 other things for the Rapid Fire Showcase. A pretty big month in terms of content where we see a couple of people people in particular going above and beyond for their activity this month, but I'd like to quickly address something before we jump into the tracks. I won't dwell on this too long, but I just wanted to mention a few quick things about my last video before I started showcasing the tracks this month. Basically, if you haven't seen my last video, I talked about what it was like being a CT creator in the community in 2022 and dealing with the toxicity that it brings. It was inspired by a situation where someone tweeted something very negative about ZPL and his tracks after seeing my last showcase that contained some of his works. In short, I just ask that everybody be respectful of the creators I showcase here. This is supposed to be a more positive series for creators to feel more motivated to continue making tracks, and I purposefully keep criticism to a minimum. I should have mentioned this in that other video, but if you guys would like to give feedback to some creators that are open to hearing it and are making tracks that could potentially be in CTGP in the future, there is a thread system in the public CTGP track testing discord server that you guys can join. Here you can start testing tracks and talking to creators specifically about where you think the threaded tracks can improve, and the more people helping out these creators, the better. Creators do like hearing feedback to improve their stuff, it just needs to be provided in a way where the creators can take actionable steps and at a time they're motivated to actually update the track. I will be leaving a link in the description if you guys want to check that out, but just remember if you are going to join that server, be respectful of the creators. But yeah, that's all I wanted to say, let's jump right into the showcase. The first track we're going to be taking a look at is 3D Ultra Radio Control Racers Backyard Garden by ZPL, which was uploaded on July 4th. Yes, that is the track's real name. ZPL is one of the more popular creators with one of the most appearances in this series. He went kind of crazy this month, and this was the first track of his which was actually commissioned by Raptor. It is based on a track of the same name from the game 3D Ultra Radio Control Racers, one that I have not played before, but regardless, it is still cool to see how this track comes together. I think the most interesting aspect is how Raptor, who is a notable CT competitive player, is commissioning ZPL, a more casual leaning creator, to make a track with cool strats and polish as well. It creates an interesting dynamic for the track, and it comes together really well because of it in my opinion. There's a lot of fall boundary on the ground that you can fly over with the curb surrounding the track as long as you're not cutting off too much, along with the shroomless rail strat at the end of the race with a boost flip trick to finish as something for more confident racers to go for online. The tricks sprinkled in give this a great pacing, and I enjoy how neat and contained the design is in contrast to the plethora of objects and obstacles to avoid. I also really love the swing set with the toads and shy guys on it in the middle of the track, and being able to see it from that sideways perspective as an obstacle is pretty cool. The visuals are also beautiful as well. It has that modern polish that most CBL tracks come with, but it also resembles the 3D Ultra Radio Control Racers game that it is based on as well. All the assets translated into this track perfectly, with slight spins on it to make it more Nintendo themed, and I love it for that. It really feels like we're in a vibrant forest with these grassy textures and amazing shadows along with an entirely filled background. I know creating background scenery can be a pain with making tracks, but ZPL always hits the nail on the head with his to make his tracks feel much more immersive and interesting. Overall, this track is very controlled and polished, yet exciting with many room for strats and fun gameplay. The balance is great, and I'm really happy to see ZPL's commissioning process working as well as it is. Great work here, as always, ZPL. Another month, another Squire track. This time, we're going to be taking a look at VK Bay by Squire Turnbull, which was uploaded to the site on the 5th of July. This is the 12th track of Squires that I'm covering in this series, and I'll admit it's starting to get a little difficult to find different ways to describe Squire each time. He's an all-around amazing track creator who's been pumping out incredible original works all year. This track, VK Bay, has a distinct summer theme, taking place in a beach setting with hotels, a roller coaster, a cavern, and an underwater section. And this has got to be his biggest project yet in regards to custom tracks with how grand this whole course is. Let's start with the visuals again, and I think you guys can see why. 
They are incredible, simply incredible, which has been typical for Squire's tracks, but he's been seriously one-upping himself with every new track that he makes. The summertime lighting mixed with the unique textures and the amount of detail in the foreground and background gives this track an incredible presentation. You guys should know by now that I do love me some water, and this is some unique and stunning water from Squire here. The underwater section with the blue lighting to truly make you feel as if you are underwater, it's amazing. The cave underneath and the cavern coming out of the water is also detailed and phenomenal visually. Now this is something that took me a while to notice about the track, but the sheer amount of objects being used solely for background scenery is incredible. Not even just the objects, but the amount of detail in the backdrop is overwhelming. There are fishes and bubbles everywhere while you're underwater, flying butterflies and birds sprinkled throughout the track, Mario characters cheering the racers on inside the hotel and on the beach, a damn plane flying around in the air outside, some sharks underwater and I'm pretty sure there are multiple sharks, uh, there's a ferris wheel in the back, some hotel buildings that you can only see from a few angles, and some of this stuff I didn't even notice until I was watching back the footage because I don't know how I would have noticed while I was playing the track, but all of it just adds onto this immersive and incredible atmosphere. The lighting and the shadows add to it as well, with the dark shading in the cavern and ending section contrasting the bright beach scenery at the beginning of the track. It's very good. That brings me to the design, and yes, it's as grand as the visuals. It's a two lap track that's passing that elusive three minute mark that can get dicey with some custom tracks, but the visual and design switch ups throughout the track keep this fresh and fun throughout its long duration. The open beach section with a few tricks turns into a faster roller coaster section with wavy road, boost panels, and moving road to speed things up. Then it turns to an open Dolphin Shoals esque section with many pathways and trickable water spouts. That leads into a section in inside a water cave with many trickable mounds similar to DK Summit, and then a more smooth, typical calm finisher out of the water into the cavern that leads right back to the beginning hotel. All of these sections make sense thematically, look incredible visually, and function well in the gameplay of the track. Tracks like these really define the community and Mario Kart Wii modding scene with grand designs and insane visuals. It's usually these summery type tracks too, as this reminds me a lot of a modern seaside resort for example, and I feel like it pushes boundaries in a similar sense. Overall, this track is a grand design with beautiful visuals, it's a fun track to drive with great pacing and switch ups, and it's thematically incredible with a detailed background and beautiful beautiful modeling. Words cannot begin to describe how technically and creatively impressive this is. For any of you that are curious of its CTGP status, it was submitted but rejected for now due to a few model issues that need to be addressed before it can be accepted, but I think with the collision inconsistencies fixed, a landing platform added underneath the Dolphin Shoals jump, and a possible shortcut or two in the roller coaster section, I can see this getting accepted by the council in the future 100%, and I believe Squire will be shooting for it like he did with Midnight Museum that got accepted recently. It would be amazing to see a track like this in CTGP for sure. I used this word many times to describe this track and I'm going to use it again. Incredible work here Squire. I'm very much looking forward to your upcoming projects because your consistency and improvement has been so fun to watch this year. Coming up next, we have SNES Bowser Castle 1 by ZPL, which was uploaded on July 8th. Another ZPL track to talk about, this one being a SNES Retro. Basically, ZPL said that he wanted to make a Mario Kart Wii version of every retro track from previous Mario Kart games in his own style, with this being the first one in chronological order that he hasn't done yet. This version of Bowser Castle 1 takes place during a sunset and goes for a chaotic racing experience with many items. And chaotic is right, this is insane, but a manageable insane which is what I like about it. It reminds me of Red Loop, but it's definitely more contained, it's much easier to focus on dodging the items themselves when the design is more straightforward and blocky. This still definitely feels like BC1, but it's much more enjoyable and I think translates well into Mario Kart Wii. The proportioning here is really nice and the amount of objects is really good in the sense that it fills up the design in the right spots, mainly the middle section with the rows of boost ramps, but the obstacles don't feel unavoidable. Again, manageable chaos. This is much better for online since the addition of actual items and other racers would cause the unmanageable chaos that makes Mario Kart Wii fun in the first place. From the great proportioning to the corner skip using the ramp, the track is simply fun to drive. That brings me to the visuals, and yes, they are also very good. The orange tinge to most of the visual elements complements the track really well. The textures are clean, the lighting is perfect, the castle pillars fill up the scene effectively, the skybox is beautiful, and the orange suits the lava and carpet really nicely. I do like how each of CPL's SNES Bowser castles have a different hue to them, with this being orange, BC2 being dark red, and BC3 being blue. 
but we'll get to ZPL's BC3 later in the video. The one thing I'd say is I'll probably just remove the last boost ramp on both straights at the end and just make it trickable road, but otherwise this is basically perfect and a really nice recreation of SNES BC1. It's high energy, there's lots of item spam, but it strikes a great balance to still be manageable while playing online. It's probably my favorite version of SNES BC1 so far, I really like this direction. Amazing stuff again ZPL. Our next track is one that I've mentioned on the channel quite a few times, but it received an update this month giving me the opportunity to dedicate a segment to it. This is Pianta Plaza by Jade and MKW, a track that initially released in early 2021, but was updated on the 10th of this month. Jaden is a creator I mentioned in my last showcase. He recently came back to the community after a half a year hiatus and has released many tracks and updates in the past couple of months. With this update specifically, he did a complete model overhaul of Pianta Plaza, a jam track of his that was created as a sequel to Delfino Square. It actually won the sequel jam it was part of, which I was really happy to see because I really loved the track when I was trying those courses out initially. And let's just say that this track has aged beautifully with time. I'm going to start with the design because I think that's the this track's strong suit. It feels pretty grand, but everything feels purposeful as well. The starting segment with many pathways with the potential shortcuts and strategies, leaning more near the start and middle of the design, and then the track tapers off to a more linear ending to bring the track together. I do like how there are many pathways and shortcuts making this very explorable, but there aren't too many where you feel overwhelmed or feel like one pathway is never worth going forever, and it's still intuitive doing a lap around this track for the first time players as well. It really utilizes its longer design well to make this feel exciting for the whole runtime, and it changes things up throughout the lap. You start off in the secluded town part where you have to decide between the top or bottom path at the path switch. Each has its own shroom cut that saves a different amount of time for many overtaking possibilities depending on if players want to hold their items to that point or if they think they'll pull the items they need in that moment as well. Then you reach the open town section with lots of open space for many possible lines and item play. Uh, there's the safe path going around the whole town or the more risky bridge path that has a satisfying shroomless or a safer shroom variant to mitigate that risk. The track then rounds out with one more shroom cut, a Delfino Square styled mud cut to balance the shroomless path before it better. And then it ends on a drawbridge and a straightaway for any last second items to change up the race before it's over. This definitely does remind me of Concord Town in design structure due to the mud cut shortcut and the drawbridge and some of the modeling, and I know it more takes after Delfino Square, but I can see the inspiration from the CT as well in this track. It feels like this would strike a great balance online for fun, spacious, yet hectic races due to the big shroom cuts being at the start with some nice strats and tricks, the middle having the more risky shroomless or safe shroom strat, and then the comic finish with one more small shroom cut. It all comes together really well. That brings me to the visuals, and they are very solid too. Yes, it's mostly Delfino Square, but it isn't the exact same due to the darker lighting and some different textures, like the wood on the bridge. It also feels like it goes for more summer vibe with how green the grass and nature is here, comparatively to the very yellowish green of the original Delfino Square. This has a great atmosphere overall with the solid background scenery, throughout the modeling of the town and even some background depictions of Jaden's other tracks, which is a nice touch. This has a lot of nostalgic energy due to its focus on a specific Mario Kart Wii track, along with the nod to more typical SketchUp modeling, but this also has a polish of a modern custom track, and I know many people do like their SketchUp CTs. Overall, this is a really solid track from Jaden, and definitely one of my favorites. This would be perfect for a distribution because of how fun it is to time trial and how fun it would be to play online from how solid the design is with its cuts and strats. I can see it being very appealing and balanced in the eyes of many players in the market for new custom tracks. Incredible work here Jaden, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of your updates and tracks this year. Next, we have another ZPL Retro, this one being GBA Shy Guy Beach, which released on July 10th. This was an interesting choice for a retro remake on ZPL's part considering Shy Guy Beach is in Mario Kart Wii, and I believe he was commissioned to do this track, but ZPL made it clear on the wiki page and in his preview video that this was created as a joke and wasn't meant to be taken seriously as an update to the original. Regardless, I mean many people in the comments of this video said that this was simply an improvement over Nintendo's, and I agree. The original wasn't the greatest to drive with all the hopping required and the slowdown that came with it. I always find races online are weird because of it, and honestly I never really noticed how simple the retros were until Scott the Waz pointed it out in his video on Mario Kart Wii. They are primitive in comparison to the Nitro tracks, especially the take of Shy Guy Beach in the vanilla game. 
This version really polishes things up though, it gives it some detail and makes it actually bearable to play on Wii. It's definitely not like a serious track going for something to rival Nintendo stuff, but it is funny and would have its uses in distributions. Everything is drivable essentially, which isn't a big benefit or drawback to me, but it's also much easier to deal with online over the cramped original. The slow ramps are now boost ramps, which is cool, but the highlight is definitely the visuals, and they are beautiful. The water, the sand, the grass, the trees, they all have the perfect textures to make the Shy Guy Beach experience much more immersive and memorable. The background is actually filled with scenery instead of an open flat ocean, and it really hits that summertime vibe with the natural surroundings. I don't know why it reminds me of this, but I've been to Iceland before, and I remember going to one of the more popular hot springs there. It was a really fun experience, and this reminds me of that though with less cold surroundings and less warm energy in the water itself, basically everything but the hot spring part. I don't know why it reminds me of it, but just the rocks in the background and the pathways with the abundance of water, it is structured similarly to some more natural hot springs I've been to. This is overall pretty satisfying to drive and a stark contrast of the original. ZPL said that he'd probably make a more serious version later, which I'm not sure what exactly that entails, but I'd imagine it'd be making this look more unique and then making the water path not faster, I'd assume. This is kind of in a similar conversation to Squire's version of DK Summit that I covered in a previous showcase, where I find it interesting to think to myself, could this be put into CTGP as a remake of a Nintendo course in Mario Kart Wii if it was genuinely better or warranted an inclusion? I'm not sure what Beam would really say to this, but any track in this lane would sure as hell be popular. As long as it's under a different name, maybe, then it might be fine. Uh, but regardless, this is cool to see, a very fun track that's very funny. Great work, again ZPL. The ZPL retros are far from over though, as we also have SNES Ghost Valley 1, which released a day after he released Shy Guy Beach on July 11th. This version of Ghost Valley 1 is mostly a port, with it being based off the Mario Kart Tour version. And while I have not played the Mario Kart Tour version, I must admit that I do really like this in Mario Kart Wii. I'm not sure how many people in the community are adamant about their love for SNES tracks because as far as I know, there aren't that many Nintendo fans that are in love with those original designs, but it is good to see those tracks in Mario Kart Wii because they are important parts of Nintendo history and some iconic designs for fans of the games. I think it's also important to consider these tracks from every single one of their iterations in official Mario Kart games, which is why I think it's good to make a SNES styled version of Ghost Valley 1 on the Wii, and then a Mario Kart Tour version for the Wii as well. These Mario Kart Tour versions of the retros, despite being the newest versions, are still important to Nintendo's history, and I think they should be more valued than they usually are. There's a lot more personality to these tour tracks, and they're more pleasing to look at and play when the company is not as technically limited as they were in the Super NES days, where they could only make a flat square in a black void. I mean, despite this, it's the same thing that I mentioned before with Shy Guy Beach. They didn't make Ghost Valley 2 very interesting at all on the Wii from a visual and design standpoint. Its gameplay online is pretty good and it's fun to TT, but the version of the track is overall pretty boring in comparison to the Nitro tracks, which again is something I would not have noticed without that Scott the Waz video. I would much rather this Mario Kart Tour styled version over a Ghost Valley 1 that was created by Nintendo exactly how Ghost Valley 2 was. And that's where this track comes in. My god, that was a long intro, but admittedly there's not much else I can really add when we actually analyze the track itself. It drives exactly how you'd expect Ghost Valley 1 to, but with great proportioning on the design, and especially the off-road portion that some versions might miss by a bit, uh, the low tricks in the middle of the track are great, and the cut at the end is great as well. It saves a lot of time right at the end, and I believe that's why GV1 isn't in CTGP anymore, because all the solutions to this quote unquote problem haven't worked well, but I think I like the cut just being there despite how much it saves, even if it makes races unbalanced. It still rewards good item play most of the time. The visuals are amazing as to be expected with ZPL, the textures are especially crisp, and the lighting is really good with the overhead lamps similar to what you'd might expect from Banshee Boardwalk. The 3D boos in the background also add a lot of personality and intrigue to the track as a whole, and I'm very glad that we have this tour version of the track on the Wii because I think it's pretty great, and no one else better to take on the challenge than ZPL himself. Again, great work here as always, ZPL. Coming up next, we have Birdo Circuit by Fafina, which released on the 12th of July. Fafina is a creator I mentioned back in May's wiki showcase for his Rio Resort track. He's a newer creator who started making tracks this year, and he's put out some pretty cool stuff. This was another track of his that was submitted to Spear X 5544's Spin the Wheel CT's competition, in which Fafina took home his second win in a row. 
The theme was to make a track dedicated to a random Mario character, hence the theming around Birdo and Super Mario Bros. 2. This has a true to Nintendo theme, with it being a Mario character's own circuit, but it still manages to feel pretty unique and it does stand out in the current CT landscape. This has a very vibrant and pink color palette that I feel hasn't been done much in the community to this degree, with many assets coming from Super Mario Bros. 2 as well, one that is probably lower in terms of interest from the Nintendo community at large. Birdo is also a character that doesn't get much love in the community or from Nintendo itself in context to the Mario Karts. She doesn't appear in the main Mario Kart games after the Wii. And fun fact, she's the only character on the Wii that doesn't have a staff ghost at all. Not the CTGP ones, the ones made by Nintendo. That's why in context, this is more unique than it might seem initially, and I think Fafina did a great job providing Birdo with some representation. The design reminds me a lot of N64 Royal Raceway, at least the Mario Kart 8 version of it. The star of the track is structured very similarly, and most of the textures seem based off its Wii U and Switch appearance, though this does branch out afterwards with the loop and in the reliance of the pink metal grates for a decent chunk of the design. I do really like how the design essentially loops the racers back onto previous parts of the track from above, that kind of layering is very nice. The grates in general are a fresh mechanic that looks and plays differently to the rest of the track, and it's fun to drive and trick around on here. The rest of the design is more standard gameplay, again akin to Mario Kart 8's Royal Raceway, but it certainly works here with the many simple grass cuts to make this track more balanced and interesting. I do like the circuit theming in Mario Kart games, and this has a great design to be more elaborate considering Birdo is more of a niche character in the franchise compared to Luigi with the Luigi Circuit or Mario with Mario Circuit, but the track is still overall simple in comparison to other Mario Kart tracks and especially other CTs. This has a good balance of action-packed tricks and boost panels, along with the standard road driving, which works very well in time trials and would be fun to play online with others too. This brings me to the visuals, where we can also see that this looks great as well. The scenery is really nice, I love the Super Mario Bros. 2 hills and the hearts floating around the track. There are higher quality textures and a more blurry atmosphere that I think works great in tandem with the love-centric theming. Fafina modeled the buildings, hills, and background elements really well. I like the Birdo statue in the background especially. The mixture of green and pink for the overall color palette makes this stand out, and I believe there's even a post effect on the characters to make their colors less saturated, like how Funky Kong's bandana is less red. It's a nice touch even if it isn't intentional. I am loving Fafina's style, and he's definitely one of the best creators to have emerged from the community recently. He always has creative themes and great layouts that are fun to watch and play. He's one of the creators that I've come to expect consistent quality from every time, and he never disappoints. I would love to see this fully polished, as this is a competition track and I ran into a couple bugs while playing, but overall this is really great and I'm impressed with how much Fafina has improved over his short time in the community. Awesome stuff here Fafina and I'm looking forward to your future work. Our next track comes from another familiar face, though more so for his takes of Wii U tracks. This is King Boo's Library by The Gaming Bram, which released on the 14th of the month. Like I said, The Gaming Bram is best known for his work with the Wii U tracks, as I believe he's ported all or most into Mario Kart Wii, but this track, which was also made for Spear X 5544's Spin the Wheel CTs competition, is a completely original work of his. While this track certainly doesn't bend as much as his typical Wii U tracks, I can still see some similar elements between his retro work and this track in particular. The curvy road and dynamic modeling is something seen in many Mario Kart 8 tracks, and I think it works very well with this theme as a scary and unknown place in a similar vein to Twisted Mansion. The design is great and the length works very well for typical Wii races. There's a lot of visual and gameplay switch-ups throughout and a good balance between the flatter sections and the dynamic curvy ones. There's a couple of spots for grass cuts and a trimless path inside the first library, but this is mostly a track to reward good driving. The modeling is great with the highlight for me being the King Boo statues going into the library and the road is all modeled well to avoid too many bumps. It's fun to drive, and there's a lot less ramps and boost panels than you might expect from recent custom tracks and works from Nintendo, so this also works to make this track more running oriented. There are still some satisfying tricks, but regardless, I can see the track playing well online. The visuals are also a highlight to the track here. The background is faded through some post effect work to make the atmosphere feel more grungy and scary. The fences, roads, buildings, boardwalks, and everything else all have high quality textures that are typical for Mario Kart tracks, but they're combined from different areas and still give this track a good amount of identity. The wilted and grey trees in the outside sections also work to give this a lot of personality. 
Overall, this is a very solid track from Bram. A short segment for sure, but I still am a big fan of this one, and I think there's a great amount of potential for Bram in the realm of original design work, since I believe he's done making every Wii U track for the Wii. Awesome stuff here. And we have another ZPL Retro, this one being SNES Choco Island 1, which released on July 14th as well. This is another SNES remake, but this one is actually based on the Choco Island 1 adaptation in Mario Kart Tour with this mostly being a port. This segment will be very similar to GV1's since it's essentially the same idea of it being good to have the tour versions and it being a simpler course in Nintendo's history. I did actually check the tour version of Choco Island 1 though, and there are quite a few more creative liberties taken here comparatively. But they were all for the better in my personal opinion. I want to highlight here as well how good I think this is compared to Nintendo's previous iterations of both Choco Island tracks. ZPL's GV1 on Wii, other than the Banshee Boardwalk elements, stay true to the tour version and what you would expect from Nintendo after the SNES and other versions of GV1 in the Mario Kart games. This Choco Island is a complete tonal shift and something you would not have expected until after the Wii version at least. The visuals having the candy and chocolate really hammer home the Choco idea from the original and I personally really like the saltine crackers in this version. The lighting is perfect, the shadows are great, and everything comes together visually to make this a phenomenally looking track. Again, quite a bit of creative liberty here for the visuals, but the saturation and background elements work a lot better here than in Nintendo's tour version in my opinion. That brings me to the design, where we see something short, but certainly sweet. The tricks changing from the old version's slow ramps to these trickable pillars feel much more fluid and work better in gameplay settings versus others since you can focus more on other items and racers instead of the tricks themselves. There isn't a ton of off-road in this version compared to some others, but I think that's more of a positive with this version since it rewards good driving while still providing balanced gameplay. The slight slowdown from the chocolate puddles at the end are a highlight to me as they add that little bit more interest in the track without creating actual off-road. It's really up to the racers whether they want to go safer and charge through it or take a riskier line to avoid the slowdown. This is incredibly solid as a Choco Island 1 version on Wii, and I really like the more creative direction ZPL took here. Amazing work once again ZPL. Choco Island 1 wasn't the only retro track that ZPL uploaded on the 14th though, because why wouldn't it be? This is SNES Bowser Castle 3 by ZPL. This version was actually built to resemble Talk's version of SNES PC3, which is the one currently in CTGP. This was mainly created to be a visual overhaul and I do quite like it. Like I mentioned in the SNES Bowser Castle 1 segment, this has the distinct blue tint and theme in comparison to ZPL's other SNES Bowser Castle tracks, though it is based off Talk's CTGP version having this tint as well. The scenery and crumbling castle elements are much more developed here and I find these falling pillars in nighttime settings to be a highlight for me personally. As always, the textures are high quality and beautiful, and the presentation is solid all around. This is definitely more gameplay focused though, and it feels basically like Tox version but smoother. The ramps are trickable, but you don't want to trick on them. I believe it's faster to hop off the boost panels in a manner like I do in the video, at the very least it feels faster. I find that this big ramp section and everything else with this version's proportioning will lead to more intense and engaging races online and in time trials too. The thwomps are placed really well in the track and they act as great obstacles. Overall, there isn't much to be said on the gameplay itself, as I find most of the commentary can be attributed to the older version this is based off of, but the fast-paced nature of this track with the corner cuts and boost ramps makes for an exhilarating track and it stays true to what the original SNES BC3 was going for. This version by ZPL is a big step up. This was accepted to CTGP by the council, though it's under needs fixes for now until the issues listed are resolved, but the track is a steady improvement and it would be great to see it in the pack. I will just add quickly, it might be cool to experiment with the lighting and darken everything except for the lava texture to give this more of a nightly atmosphere, but regardless of that, this is a wonderful track and another great creation this month from CPL to add onto the pile. Great work. Coming up next, we have Rocky River Frenzy by Alter Yoshi, which released on the 15th of July. Alter Yoshi, or Ninti Yoshi as he's more well known by, is someone who I haven't really covered much in this series other than a showcase I did of his font last month, but no actual tracks yet. He is a very talented creator though, with some of his most well known tracks being Sarasa Kingdom, his version of N64 Frat by Snowland, and Toad's Turnbike, along with some other tracks of his I really enjoy like Cliffside Circuit, Wario's Cosmic Construction, Bonita Harbor, Flashback Forest, and his version of Merry Mountain from Mario Kart Tour. 
This track was originally made for a Turbo Jam, which is essentially a competition where creators try to make the best track they can make in only 2-3 to three hours. The track takes place in a jungle circuit, starting by a river with a steep downhill, and continuing inside the jungle with many falling boulders. Truth be told, I didn't expect to like this one as much as I did, considering it was originally made and designed for Turbo Jam with only 2-3 to three hours of work put into most of the creative and technical work the first time around. I had this planned for the Rapid Fire Showcase until I actually played the track, and I found it to be a really engaging experience overall that I had to make into its own segment. Alter actually released this in conjunction with three other updated Turbo Tram tracks of his, but this is probably my favorite for one particular reason. This does everything that GP Mario Beach does right, but better. And as you guys know, I put GP Mario Beach higher on my CTGP ranking than most people would have probably expected. I always found the simpler design and speed mod to be a lot of fun, but in this case, the slower speed mod and actually engaging obstacles makes for some fun gameplay and one of my favorite speed modded experiences of all time. These obstacles include the Koopa Cape Zappers in the tight lines of the first half of the track, the DK Mountain boulders on the latter half, the many boost panels, and in a more general sense, the other players and their items. With this being a more contained design, it leaves a lot more room for fun and interesting player to player interactions. I thoroughly enjoyed my time playing this track offline versus the bots, so I couldn't imagine how fun this would be online against other people as everyone tries their hardest to avoid the tracks and each other's obstacles. This has the simpler design along with the water current, it doesn't actually speed you up I don't think, and the boost panels to create this fast paced and hectic gameplay loop without it feeling too unfair or frustrating. Everything comes together here very well design wise. The progression from the downhill sections with the KC zappers and its switching to a gameplay focus of dodging the boulders while going uphill is also really smart. It's providing different obstacles for different parts of the race to keep racers engaged without it feeling like you're seeing too much of the same thing. The shorter design also works really well for this kind of gimmick since races on this can stretch on if people lose a lot of time from items, boulders, zappers, and all the obstacles that this track holds. I honestly even think that this track would be fun in time trials. It it wouldn't be a traditional time trial track, but it would still be fun to try and avoid all the obstacles and shoot for as fast of a time as possible. That brings me to the visuals, and they're also pretty great, with this being polished up quite a bit since its initial Turbo Jam appearance. I really like the moody lighting for this forced atmosphere, and the many trees in the background covering some of the light and disguising where the boulders are coming from as well. I'm also a fan of the background elements, like the mushrooms sprinkled throughout the track, and the cheering characters to make this course feel more engaging. It almost feels like this kind of track would be a big event in context to the universe that these characters take part in. I always like seeing elements like that which focus on the actual racing aspect. The unique and moody skybox containing the bright sun and clouds covering the sky also looks great, and it hammers home the fact that while this does look like it takes place in the Mario universe, it stands out visually from all of Nintendo's tracks and most other CTs. It's a track that is most akin to DK Mountain, but looks nothing like it, and it takes some visual cues from DK's Jungle Parkway, but still has a different kind of lighting and many different textures to make this stand out. It has an overall great tint and hue that I really like. As I mentioned in my last non-showcase video, Alter Yoshi did announce that he is going to be distancing himself from Mario Kart Wii and the community as a whole. He's expecting to finish his projects by the end of the year, but then he plans to retire and quit making any more custom tracks or updates after that. I find this news very unfortunate considering how talented Alter is at making tracks, but I also understand why he is distancing himself due to the context he provided in the Google Doc he made about the situation. I am happy to see that he is going to be finishing up his projects and not feel like he's leaving any stones unturned before he goes. I'll definitely be looking forward to his new stuff. I imagine he has some bigger tracks and updates coming along the way, but I mean, I also thoroughly enjoyed this presumably smaller project of his here, so I'm looking forward to just whatever he has in store next. Incredible stuff, Altair. This is the seventh track of ZPLs that I'm covering, and it's not even the last one. This is also technically his first non-retro of the video, if you don't count the 3D racing one. This is Variety Pack Circuit by ZPL and Brawlbox Gaming, which was uploaded on July 21st. Brawlbox Gaming for this track was the designer and commissioner, as he's someone who's worked on the Variety Pack distribution that this track is based off of. It's basically a distribution that's supposed to offer a lot of different kinds of tracks and game modes to players, but this track is a simple circuit course themed around it with fair 
various billboards and cool Mario Kart Tour as pathways and elements. I quite like this one. I can definitely see some of the GBA Mario Circuit inspiration for Mario Kart 8 for the visual presentation and some of the design elements. I think this track overall has a great mixture between Nintendo's old and new style when it comes to circuit layouts since this is rather simple of a base layout, but it has some dynamic elements like the sloped road and ramps in the middle of the track and the red great paths that have become a staple in Mario Kart Tour tracks. I like the work put in to make this track not feel too one note and similar throughout the course, with the great switch ups in the types of road, the types of shortcuts, and the types of pathways to keep things fresh. The design and length is great for what the track is going for, and I think the fun nature of the layout will make it fun to play online. I'm pretty sure that ending cut with the curved road is for the one feather item to hop over the wall. I can't say for certain because I couldn't test it on CTGP, but if it is then that's cool to see. This also looks great of course, with the nice typical circuit visuals, along with the great shadows and lighting as well. I like how the background conveys the variety pack theme effectively with the billboards of some of the modes and creators of the pack. I love seeing tracks like this that are themed around stuff that only people in the CT community will really pick up on. Variety Pack is pretty well known for some of its custom tracks and game modes, like the Blue Shell Showdown mode that is incredibly fun. I'm glad that it has some representation in the CT form. I'm also glad to see that ZPL's commissioning work has been doing so well. All of the stuff, uh, excuse me. All of the stuff that I've seen from him has been incredibly consistent and fast as well. He's perfect for the job. I just really enjoy seeing creators get rewarded for their work, and he definitely deserves it. Though I think this track specifically was a free commission, since ZPL mentioned that in the video. But regardless, great stuff here, ZPL and Brawlbox. Our next track is. Well, we have something that's not a track. This is Battle Rock Galaxy, a custom battle stage by Jaden MKW, which was uploaded on the 23rd of the month. Jaden once again coming in clutch with the battle stage representation after his Castle Ground stage from last month. This is based off Battle Rock Galaxy from Super Mario Galaxy. It was originally worked on to be submitted for an older custom track jam, but was never completed. This arena features a moving platform in the center that transports player between an upper and lower level, and wow, Jaden is really going crazy with these battle stages. I'm not very keen on battle stages in general, so I always expect new stages to be fun but not too interesting for someone like me, who much prefers races, but I'm always blown away by how much I enjoy these stages, especially Jaden's recent ones. It's great to see that his stuff looks pretty professional and stays realistic to ideas that Nintendo themselves could have easily explored, from the solid visuals to the Super Mario Galaxy theme, to the simple and geometric layout with a twist to spice things up, this really has that Nintendo for the Wii charm. I love seeing battle stages themed around other Nintendo games and themes, and Super Mario Galaxy is an amazing course to base stages and tracks <coughs> off of for sure. This looks like it was ripped straight from Galaxy, and it uses textures that are unique to Mario Kart Wii, but not Nintendo as a whole, which is why it works so well. On the surface, this arena looks like a circle. <laughs> the circle on its own wouldn't have been that bad in all honesty if you compare it to some of the SNES and GBA battle stages that are even less eventful, but this stage has more depth to it than just a circle with the falling platform element in the middle that brings battlers into a different room inside the galaxy. And this floor looks absolutely sick with the great windows into space and the red color palette. For balloon battle, there isn't much to really entice players to go down here. The bots weren't really that interested so it's hard to warrant going down there in offline gameplay at least, but this definitely works for something like coin runners where the coins would be spawning down there as well and then you'd have more contained gameplay there. And regardless, I think if the platform was slightly faster then it would be more useful for balloon battle either way. The fact that this platform goes up a little farther than the top level of the arena is also really cool since it acts as protection from the other battlers and with the right items you can make some really cool plays at the very top at certain angles. This is an amazing stage, it's great to look at, great to play, it has a great usage of the middle object, it's got a great theme and a great presentation overall. It's perfect for battle mode. Awesome stuff here once again Jaden, and I'm looking forward to the rest of your Mercury projects coming out as always. Our last track to cover in depth is one from a custom track jam competition. It was the third jam from season 4 that had a theme of mountain, and the results were posted on the 25th of July. 
In this video, I'll be covering the track that finished in second place, and that would be Bullet Bill Chill by Shorky. Shorky's a name that I have not properly mentioned in a while. He had appearances in some collab projects back in May and June, but he hasn't made a serious track on his own since April. For those of you who might not be as familiar with the older episodes, Shorky is a creator who started making tracks around this time a year ago. Since then, he's participated in many CT competitions and has quickly become an incredibly solid creator by mastering both commonly used modeling tools in the community. I'm very glad to see him making and uploading another track again, even if I almost missed it this month since he made the page on August 4th after I had collected all the tracks for this video, but as you can see by me trying to hopefully upload this by the end of August, uh, I'm talking about it here, it's okay. <laughs> this is a Bullet Bill themed track where racers drive inside and around a snowy volcano while avoiding Bullet Bill obstacles. Let's start with the theme since I really like it. The focus on relating this track to Bullet Bills is a theme I don't see too often considering how much of a Mario staple it is, but it is very nice. You can make the case for DS Airship Fortress, but that might be more attributed to Bowser Jr., whereas this is just a full on Bullet Bill themed track. I also like the decision to make it snowy but still adding a volcano and including the temple. It makes for a track that is more than the sum of its parts. It uses more common Mario Kart themes and makes a unique one out of it. So contextually, the track makes sense, but does this track make me happy? Yes. Shorky is a master of design and he made another great one here. It's kind of simple but certainly has its depth and it's very fun to drive. It keeps things fresh too as you can tell the differences from the more edgy temple sections compared to the dynamic snow and volcano ones, and you can tell the difference between the off-road obstacle in the snow sections and the lava obstacle in the volcano section. Different sections require a different approach to gameplay, so it keeps racers on their toes throughout the duration of the course. I also like the elaborate ending to the track with the half pipes and the boost panels in the middle with the bullet bills blocking them. Even though the middle path isn't really faster than just taking the path pipe anyway, it's easier to take at least so the obstacle makes sense. The design is definitely my favorite element of the course, but that's not to say the visuals are bad, far from it. It takes a lot of assets from Dry Dry Ruins, Grim Volcano, and DK Summit, but the combination is what gives the track its identity. And this track has its own personality with which textures it takes from, so I think the usage of Mario Kart Wii assets elevates this track personally. There's also some really nice lighting to give this track some more depth, and while I'm not sure if this is intentional, I like how the snowy fog dies down on laps 2 and 3 in the indoor sections. I know Alpine Peak does this too, so maybe it's a common post effect thing I'm not too aware of, but it's a nice effect regardless. Overall, this is a great and very well put together track that makes me forget that this was a submission for a CT competition with a time limit on it despite how well thought out and polished it feels. Basically, we need more Shorky tracks. Incredible stuff once again Shorky, glad to see you doing more jams and I hope to see more tracks from you this year. Alright, now that the main segment is out of the way, let's dive right into the rapid fire showcase. For anybody that's new here, this is the part of the video where I give some quick recommendations to tracks and other creations that I didn't have too much to say on, but were still creations I really liked and wanted to showcase. Let's get started. Item Box Mix by Judge81. This is a distribution with the sole purpose of taking the 32 original regular tracks in the game and changing the placement of the item boxes to create different types of races. I think Troy has tried this one out on his channel, so some of you might have seen this already, but it is interesting to think about how much the races in this game would have changed by something as simple of a change as item box placement. Competitive races would be played extremely differently from how they are currently, so it's something I definitely find interest in thinking about. Mario Party 8 Moped Mayhem by Dylan Mario. I have not played Mario Party 8 and I'm not sure if admitting that out loud will give me backlash. The main one I used to play was Mario Party DS, but I found this track to be a pretty solid and fun looking course from a creator who emerged with his first CTs this year, both being ports of Mario Party game modes. The design is pretty grand and it has a lot of walls to keep gameplay contained, but there are a couple of ramps and shortcuts to spice things up too. I enjoyed it so I definitely recommend it to those who actually know this mode from Mario Party games. GCN Rainbow Road by ZBL. This was a track that was commissioned by Kozakira, I believe, to shorten the design effectively with a visual presentation very similar to ZBL's other track, Glistening Highway. As an alternative to the other versions that are more heavily based on the GameCube track, I do really like this and I honestly prefer it over the true to form GCN versions. Though I'll admit I never grew up with the GameCube, so I wouldn't have that nostalgic attachment to it. I just think the length and proportioning of this track works much better on Wii, and I like the effort to make a few cuts for better racing like the gap cut at the start. Understandably, this might not be for everyone, but I do really like it personally. 
Mario Kart Wii Service Pack by Stubbler. This is a distribution that I've talked about before in this series. I initially claimed it to be a distribution to be used for time trialing needs with better ghost saving systems and ghost replay systems. I say initially because after going through the actual intention of this pack after I made that segment, I realized that this is supposed to be a much bigger project than just being a powerhouse for the time trial scene. This has been updated quite a bit to include homebrew channel support with its own channel on the Wii menu, which I think is the biggest feature and will make the pack a lot more accessible, along with better performance, improved options for scrolling through menus and watching ghosts, and simply a lot better optimization to the version that I previously covered. This already is incredible work done by Stubbler and everyone else working on the project, but the actual roadmap for the pack's future plans is nothing short of exciting to see, and I didn't mention that in the initial segment, so I'll do that now. We're still in version 0.1, which focuses on time trial improvements, but version 0.2 will focus on better custom track support to create CT packs and switch between them via in-game menus along with in-game updaters for the distribution and packs. Version 0.3 will focus on bringing online support that moves away from the player-to-player -player connections of the vanilla game to a custom client server system that will allow for cheap prevention, mid-race reconnections, and improvements to the team mode of the game to allow for more than two teams, friendly fire, and a way to communicate to the racers you're playing with somehow. No clue how that will happen, but nothing's going to stop me from being excited about that. And version 0.4 is insane in stone, but it will more likely focus on additional game modes and battle mode improvements. It's better to look at these plans as something far in the distance without setting expectations too high, but the work that Stubbler's already put into this distribution and how fast he's been able to improve the game's code has completely shocked me and I don't know how he does it. He gets a lot of support from talented coders that are usually detailed in the release notes, and it really does excite me seeing how well this code extension has progressed. I will certainly be actively keeping up with this project, and you guys should be too. Haunted Gardens by Holland. This is an update to the version currently in CTGP, and it's a pretty sizable one. There's a visual overhaul, the original mud shortcut was recreated, there's some design tweaks, and other changes to the track overall. It's pretty cool and definitely tries more to create the original while still enhancing it visually and design-wise. I like both versions of this and the CTGP version around the same, but it's definitely worth showing off and hopefully the Haunted Wood fans in the crowd really like this update. Bonton Raceway by The Gaming Bram. This is another original track of Bram's based on the Cap Kingdom from Super Mario Odyssey with really nice theming, visuals, and a fun true to the original design. I was going to cover this last month with a different design, but I got a pretty big update completely changing the ending to add the ship from DS Airship Fortress, which is interesting, but it works here pretty well. Overall, this track has many of the same strengths that King Boo's library did, and I'm looking forward to seeing more original works from Bram if he chooses to make more tracks like this. Super Blooper Circuit by ZPL. Another track of ZPL's this month, and this one was another commission by Act Ishikawa to make a track based on the Super Blooper vehicle. It's an interesting choice for a track, it's shaped like a blooper with many background bloopers and blooper item boxes. It's inspired by tracks like JC and Yoshi Circuit and DS Cheap Cheap Beach, and yes, this has some great theming with beautiful visuals and an overall fun and simple design. Another very consistent track from ZPL, and another successful commission for sure. Checkout Route by Jaden NKW. Jaden made a few updates to some of his simpler CTGM courses this month, with this being an update to his track from the Shopping Jam. It now takes place inside Coconut Mall with some updated textures and model changes. It's pretty simple but looks pretty great with an amazing theme, and for a short track it's pretty fun to drive. I love seeing these jam tracks get fully realized. Codename Wario by Custorian and Jaden MKW. Jaden also updated this one, his track with Custorian from the Cave CT Jam. If you guys remember my CT Jam ranking video, a lot of people were surprised with how much I stuck up for this track. I think even the creators were surprised. But I honestly just like playing this one with the simple design, the obstacles throughout the track, and the shortcuts. It makes for engaging races in my opinion. This track was updated with mostly a visual update from what I can tell, and I think it's really nice. Again, if you guys like simpler tracks, check these two out. Wario's Battle Canyon by Jaden MKW and Questorian. Yeah, Jaden also went ahead and made this track into a battle stage, and it works decently well. It's pretty long and race-like in structure, but it still works with the start of the track being a very high impact area. I know there isn't much benefit for creators to do this, but it would be amazing to see more creators adapt their already finished tracks into battle courses where they section off a specific part of the track for example for contained battle gameplay. It doesn't have to be too polished, but it definitely makes for some interesting new stages for people to try out. Regardless, Jaden once again is carrying the battle stage torch in 2022 and i hope to see more creators follow in his footsteps this year 
Daisy's Palace by Joris MKW. This received an update during the month with some pretty big design changes, like the big fence near the end to make the lab 3 cuts not possible, some other changes to how the cuts were blocked, and then some decent visual improvements throughout the track. Not too big of changes, but still definitely worth mentioning, and I'm glad Joris is still putting a lot of effort into his tracks. Diddy Kong Summit by Lucio Wins. This track was made for the same mountain CTGM as Bullet Bill Chill, and this is a track based on DK Summit, but now owned by the little dude. I do like how there's many unique elements to differentiate this track, like the skiing section in the middle, and some fun driving and tech overall. I'm always a fan of Lucio's ideas and designs as I like how creative he's been getting. You guys might have noticed, other than Bullet Bill Hill, that I haven't covered a lot of Siege Jam tracks in recent episodes, and it's not because the quality has been getting worse in the tracks, it's mostly that creators haven't been uploading the tracks as much to the wiki, which means I can't really showcase them in the wiki showcase. Tars is a newer creator who's made some incredible Siege Jam stuff, but he simply doesn't release any of it on the wiki and it hurts my soul. But oh well. Mario Kart Wii Ranked Play by the Ninja King OW. I didn't get a chance to actually play this game mode online with other people before it got updated after this month, but this is essentially a modified VR system to add ranks for certain VRs, and it only stretches from 1 to 4,999 VR. It's a really neat concept, and I would love to get the chance to actually try this one out online and rank up. This is an open source game mode, so other distributions are free to use this mode for themselves, which is really cool. It's a simple idea, but cool concept, and I'll link the wiki page if you guys want to download this and check out the discord server for this mode. And finally, Tour Paris Promenade by Brad de la Boy. I don't really know how these Paris Promenade tracks work as someone who didn't play Tour and hasn't done much with the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC, but this is a very nicely made take on the Switch DLC version I believe. I think Brad made every version and uploaded them all this month, but this was the main layout that I recognized so here it is. If you're a fan of this layout, or want to see the other Tour versions in Mario Kart Wii, these are the versions and they look and play great. I highly recommend them. Alright, with the rapid fire showcase out of the way, let's move on to the final section of the video, the awards. The award for the best competition track of the month is gonna go to Birdo Circuit by Fafina. With the creative theming and fun design, I simply found this track to be a blast, and I really am excited to see where Fafina goes from here since he's been making some really steady improvements this year. The award for the best custom battle stage of the month is going to go to Battle Rock Galaxy by Jaden NKW. The best battle stage creator of the year award would go to Jaden as well for the work he's put into his battle stages so far, and he's pretty unrivaled in that category. I'm looking forward to more battle stages from Jaden or any other creators if they were willing to throw their hat into the ring. The award for the best retro track of the month is going to go to SNES Bowser Castle 1 by ZPL. I was only able to choose tracks from ZPL this month basically because of how great and plentiful his retro game was, but I honestly think that SNES BC1 might be the most fun track to play on Wii out of all of them this month. Amazing stuff though ZPL for all your retro work. And finally, the award for the best custom track of the month, it's going to VK Bay by Squire Turnbull. I might be a little basic here giving it to this track, but just look at it. Just play the track. It's incredible how well put together this track is, and Squire has been grinding this year for sure. Incredible track Squire, and I can't wait to see more of your projects. Thank you guys for watching the whole video and being patient with me. I know it took a while since I focused on the commentary video first, then it took me forever to write the script and I had to push back the audio recording since I caught COVID during August. You guys might have noticed that I am a little congested in this video, I was gonna wait until I was was fully fine but I genuinely could not wait any longer to just record this video and get it out. I'm doing fine though so don't worry about me, I just want to clear the air there. As always the wiki links and youtube pages for all the authors I covered are in the description if you guys would like to support them. If you still watching, then you must have liked the video right? Just please like the video bro, come on, I'll do anything. And subscribe to the channel if you want to continue watching my content. Thank you again for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next video, peace out.